Surprise! We got a Starlink Mini. Now we've always mounted our Starlinks on tripods, and if you're not sure why we do that, check out the link below to the video for three reasons that we love putting our Starlinks on tripods. But today, we're going to talk about how we're going to take the power cable, which is currently just running inside the camper, and we're going to install an outside power jack so we can easily and quickly plug it in when we get to camp, and easily and quickly pack it up when we're done. And here we sort of see the problem. Cable goes in, then there's a pile of cable that came with the Mini, which is great. It's great that there's a lot of cable. And then it goes into this DC to AC inverter, which goes into an extension cord. And then the extension cord goes into an inverter that is under here. And there's no reason to invert all that power for one. Uh, the Starlink Mini can just be DC. So we're going to make it just DC and stay tuned to the end where we do a speed test of our new Starlink Mini to see how much bandwidth we get for our upload and download speeds. At Bantha Overland, we're on a mission to inspire and enable more people to get outside and experience the fulfillment of overland-based travel. Join us as we share our adventures and tips for finding awesome routes and dispersed camping, make our own DIY gear, and try to find our balance of mixing work and play as we try to spend more of our time traveling, exploring, and connecting. And in addition to using DC power, we're going to hook it up to this smart plug here. Now we previously installed this for our Starlink standard, which is powered over ethernet, and so you can see our ethernet connector here. And so we would use this when we got to camp and just plug an ethernet cable in. And this is a weatherproof, dustproof jack. Um, very durable, it's made for marine applications. But one of the nice things is we have this extra connector here, which is not used, and it's called a keystone connector. And so we're gonna install a barrel jack for power for the Starlink Mini uh, right here. And then we'll be able to run both our Starlink Standard and our Starlink Mini, because we're gonna do some tests with both until we decide which one is the best for us. All right, so I'm gonna get together the supplies we're gonna use for the project. So we have this barrel jack connector, which fits in a keystone jack. Have a barrel connector that's the same size as the Starlink Mini connector. Have some wire cutters and strippers. Have some black and red 16 gauge cable. And then I have a multimeter and some alligator clips so that we can test the voltage and uh, make sure everything looks good before we connect the Starlink Mini. And so the way this is going to work is we're going to put this barrel jack in the exterior connector and then the Starlink Mini's barrel jack or cable, I might make some shorter cables myself, is just going to go ahead and plug right in there and hopefully everything works just like it should. Alright, so I'm going to give you a quick tour of what we're about to do. So we currently have our Starlink hooked up down here. This is our Starlink standard. You can see the router, the power supply, and an inverter. And so we're going to keep these in here for right now because we want to do some field testing between the Starlink Standard and Mini to see what the performance is like. But we also have this S-Pod system. And this basically is a relay system that lets us turn circuits on and off and for lights dim things. And so we currently have our Starlink on that circuit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to repurpose one of these inside-outside circuits to connect the cabling for the Mini and it's just going to be straight DC. So if you don't have a system like this, we're basically hooking it up to a, a 12 volt uh, DC system and a 200 amp hour lithium battery bank. And then we're going to run some cabling from over here where the S-Pod relay block is under the dinette table, along here, here. We're going to run it through some cabinets down here. And that's eventually going to come out here which is the other side of our connector that has the two keystone jacks. And so you can see one of those jacks has the ethernet right now for the Starlink standard. And then we're going to take out the blank for the other jack and we're gonna go ahead and put in that keystone barrel connector here. And I'll have links to all of the different products and tools we used uh, down below in the description if this is something you wanna try yourself. And we'll also include a link to how we put that hole in the side of our camper 
and how we installed that jack. Uh, it was a little bit scary, but it was easy in the end, and um, we really like it, so glad we did it. All right, so at this point, I've run the wire around the camper, and I have the two stripped ends right here. And before I go any further, I'm just going to hook these up to a multimeter and make sure that they actually register what I think they're going to uh, before I spend all the time to hook everything up. All right, so we got it hooked up. We got 13.3 volts DC, which is around what I was expecting. Right now, the battery is at 3.3, uh, 3.5, depending on where you measure it. So that's what I would expect for a 12 volt system. So I'm going to hook it up to the barrel jack and then do another test to make sure that reads the same voltage. There we go, got the jack hooked up and got the same voltage, so I'm going to go ahead and install this in the outside connector. Alright, and we'll do one more voltage test out here. There we go, looks good. 13.3, I think it is time to try hooking up the Starlink Mini. All right, so let's go try this cable over here. Now we'll certainly need to do some cable management, maybe even carry some shorter cables, but this is much better. We can just get to camp, plug it in, and then move the Starlink to a place where it has a good clear view of the sky for a nice strong connection. I hope you're finding this video helpful. One of the things I love is making DIY overland gear inspired by my adventures. And one of the pieces of gear I love the most the last couple years is the Starlink Star Adapter that I make for Starlink Standard, Starlink Mini, and other Starlinks to put your Starlink on a tripod, a ram mount, or anything with a quarter inch 20 thread. It helps you to get your Starlink off the ground where it might get tripped over, run over, or otherwise damaged. And it helps you to get a better, clear view of the sky. It's small, it's compact, and if you already travel with a tripod, it's easy to use. Check it out at shop.banthaoverland.com or check the link in the description. If it's something that would be helpful to you, I appreciate your support. Now, back to the video. All right, so a little problem. The Starlight Mini is not turning on with the new jack, and I did a little internet research, and someone posted a great Reddit thread, which I'll include in the description. But basically, if you look at the output that you're getting from the wall power supply that you can plug the cable into that comes with the Starlink Mini, you're getting two amps out at 30 volts. And the system in this camper is 12 volts, which means if you do the conversion, it is five amps at 12 volts, which requires a much thicker cable, especially when you're trying to connect 50 feet plus the 15 feet that we ran here in the camper. All right, so the Starlink did not actually work. And I'm just measuring the voltage that's coming out of this wall adapter. It looks like it's actually closer to 30 volts. I think one option is to up the voltage a little bit so I could uh, get a little uh, converter that takes the 12 volts from the camper and puts it up to 24 or 36 or 48 volts. So that's one option. Um, I also think using a shorter cable or thicker cable might help. And so since we've run 16 gauge cable in here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a short little um, six, 16 gauge cable, um, maybe 5, 10 feet long, try it with the Starlink Mini, see if that works. And if that works, then I'll decide, you know, uh, how long of a cable can I make myself at 16 gauge versus do I want to step it up to 24 or 36 volts. I probably am going to step it up voltage wise, but uh, I don't have the converter right now to step up the voltage and so I do have cabling and so uh, I always love a good experiment and so I'm going to do the experiment to see if a 5 or 10 foot 16 gauge cable uh, does get enough power um, and amperage to the Starlink Mini. All right so I made a bit of a homemade cable here so this is a 16 gauge wire in here and then I just uh, temporarily crimped it to some 16 gauge. And then there's about uh, 10 feet of cable, 5, 10 feet of cable going to the Starlink Mini. 
and now it works. So definitely validate it that it was the size of the cable um, that was not working out at 12 volts. And so I uh, still need to decide what I want to do, but got it working. All right, so I promised you a speed test. So here we go. We're connected to the Starlink Mini. About 50 megabits per second down. 60, 70. About 8 or 9 up. And I didn't spend a lot of time pointing this in the best location. I just sort of threw it out back behind the camper. So there you get about 70 megabits per second down and 8 up, which is pretty good. That's pretty usable. So while using the thicker 16 gauge cable did work in a shorter run at 12 volts DC, I think I am going to try and step it up and see if I can use the standard Starlink cable. It does have those nice little connectors that are waterproof and it's a nice long 50 foot section of cable and I've definitely used 50 feet of ethernet with my older Starlink so I think that range would be nice. So stay tuned for a future video to see uh, the upgrade of switching to a higher voltage. All right, it's been about two weeks since I made that first video and I'm working on some other projects here in the, in the camper today that I'll show you in the future, but I wanted to give you an update on the 12 volt situation. So I did wind up getting a little step up converter that goes from 12 to 24 volts and it's been working really well. I have the Starlink Mini running on 24 volts. I think it can put output about five amps, um, which is more than the mini should ever need it should only ever need three amps and probably even less than that when it's running but i just wanted to show you uh, the converter i got how i wired it into the system and let you know that i'm really happy with it so um, i'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out that 12 to 24 volt converter and see if it's right for your project uh, it's really affordable and very easy to use and so far i'm very happy with it all right so as you can see i still have some wiring cleanup to do but I wanted to finish this video before I get everything tucked away and it'll be sort of hard to show you. So this is the 12 to 24 volt step up converter that I got. You can see the output is 24 volts, five amps max. So I just got a few extra amps in there um, just in case I would ever need that for anything in the future. And so uh, this is the converter, got it off Amazon. Um, it came with these nice little clip-in splice connectors so you can just flip these switches up and uh, slide your wires in. And then uh, this is an inline fuse right here. Um, I believe I fused it with, yep, a 15 amp fuse, which if you do all the math, um, you know, I think the max draw of this would be 11.5 amps or something like that. And so um, just fusing it a little bit higher. And so I'm gonna tuck all this away and get it, get it out of the way, but, um, you know, I can still get to it if I need to service it or I need to replace the fuse or anything like that. And I've been super happy with this. I've been able to run the Starlink Mini um, with the original cable that came with the Starlink. Well, I know that was quite a journey to figure out how to use our Starlink Mini with 12 volts DC. But now that it's all set up and integrated into the truck camper, we're really happy with it and we're excited to travel with it in the weeks and the months to come. If you found that helpful, hit that like button so other folks like you can find this. And if you have other questions or tips, please put them in the comments. I'd love to learn from you, and I'd also be happy to try and answer other questions you might have. And hit that subscribe button if you're curious about the coming weeks and months as we travel with Starlink Mini, what works well, what doesn't, what tips and recommendations do we have, and just sort of seeing what happens. Until next time, I'm Adam, and I'll see you out there.